oftentimes people don't recognize when supernatural money uh, comes into their life. But what is supernatural money? It's money that you didn't have. God gives it to you because he's giving you seed to sow. Oftentimes people don't have, they have zero dollars. Say like four or $3,000 comes to you out of nowhere. As a result of that money coming to you, how do you take that money and cling to it as if it is like your deliverance? No, it is seed money. You didn't have the money. The money comes to you by supernatural means. That's what supernatural money is. And see what happens when somebody eats the seed after money comes to you through supernatural means and like you don't find nothing to sow into God. You let him know, okay, stop the supernatural money flow. Don't give it to me no more. When God is telling Solomon, I'm going to make you rich. He's literally telling Solomon, he said, I'll give you riches and wealth. Well, he's saying, I'm going to give you supernatural money. If you notice, Solomon still found a way to keep on sowing through the money. Because supernatural money is money that originally wasn't given to you. It wasn't given to you uh, prior. It's given to you now because God is giving you a way to bail yourself out. You have a way to sow. You have a way to honor him and respect him and say, Lord, I know that you are my source. So remember this. There are times where people miss that the supernatural money has been given to them to honor God. They take all the money and say, I'm going to use all this money to handle what I want to handle. I'm going to use all this money to make sure I'm secure and I'm safe. But what you miss is that money was given as a test. God already knew that you didn't have nothing. He's giving you the money to see, will I be able to guide you when I give you millions, when I give you 100,000, when I give you 50,000, when I give you 10,000, will I be able to guide you with it? And what people do, they show God, no, you will not be able to guide me because I'm gonna lean to my own understanding. I'm going to make sure that I have what I need to be done. Uh, I'm going to make sure that I, I, I get all of my, my responsibilities out. I'm going to make sure that I'm good. And that doesn't show God that you're ready for wealth. It shows God, I am still going to rob you if you give something to me. The truth of the matter is, let me tell you this. The Holy Spirit, if he is restoring a man or a woman, say you sinned against God and he is restoring you. Here's what he does. He'll put money in your hand and see if you're going to honor him. That's what he does. Because number one, you done wronged him with your life. You did him dirty. He'll put money in your hands because if you go to a grocery store right now and they have a slippery floor, and you fall on your back and hurt yourself, they'll pay you money. Now, don't go do that. Don't go do that. But they'll pay you money because they're underneath that lawsuit, you were affected by their business. Your body was affected by their business. You were injured because of them. Now, watch this here. They will pay you because they are responsible for injuring you. There are people that's responsible for injuring God and they never sow into God. So what God does is he'll give you money and he'll see, okay, you said that you're sorry for what you did. You said that I repent. You said that I, I, I don't wanna do what I did no more. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna give you the seed. Give me compensation for injuring me. That's why God ministers seed to his enemies. And, and it, it, don't go like, it don't go like how man been telling you for ages. Man been telling you that there's nothing you could do to pay God back. Yes, there is. There's many things you could do to pay God back. Yeah. You know what you're doing? Know where you're going? 
So there are things that you can do to pay God back. People say that you can't. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Because if you notice what Satan did with that philosophy is that people become lazy. They don't have no zeal to do God right. Or there's nothing I could do to pay God back. And then they end up having complete nothingness to themselves. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 25. As a matter of fact, let's go there. Let's go here to Matthew chapter 25. Let's go here to Matthew chapter 25. Let me show you something. I want, I want to read this to you. I'm going to show you how God is a businessman. If you say that you repent, he going to put money in your hands for you to sow into him. Okay, you sorry, right, for what you did to me? Okay, pay me. Pay me. I'm going to put the money in your hand. Pay me. Show me that you sorry. If you so sorry, don't take the money. You still buying all your meals. You still eating all. No, the Bible said in Joel chapter two, it said, return unto me with weeping and fasting. That don't, why? Because you ain't spending the money now to go buy no meals, do all that stuff that you was doing, enjoying yourself. No, it's a time for you to repent. People say that they repent. Then them flood pluckers be, <laughs> flood pluckers be going to flood ruckers, enjoying themselves, eating good, living. I thought you said you repent. That's not, when, when you hurt God that created you, you don't be eating no big meals, enjoying yourself. No. If you found out that somebody that you love right now died, would you go to go to corral, go to a buffet? <laughs> you just found out your child died. Okay, let's go eat. People let God die in their presence and they'll be like, no, I'm going to still enjoy myself. I'm still going to eat good, drink good, do everything. I'm going to buy myself. I'm going to go shopping for clothes. The Bible said, put on sackcloth and ashes. Why, why is sackcloth and ashes so important? Because it means that you're dying to yourself. Ain't that deep? Because when you look at it from that aspect, it's like Pete, man wrong God. He'll put us, he'll put money in your hands, see for you to sow, for you to honor him. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> Venezuela. <laughs> trying to take us to court. <laughs> All right, let's go here. In Matthew chapter 25. The Lord is talking about the sower that refused to sow the money that he gave him. I'm going to show you something. Look at what the Lord says. He says, cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Look what the Bible say. The Bible said, cast the unprofitable servant. I'm going to tell you something. When God puts seed in your hand and you're not a sower, he labels you unprofitable. That means he can't enjoy you for nothing. He put the finances in your hand. He put the money in your hand for you to create an experience for him. He called the man who took the money and didn't sow nothing. He called him an unprofitable servant. Now that's deep. So God calls people unprofitable. That means I can't profit off of you. You're not increasing me. You're not building me. I can't get nothing from you. You're not adding on to me. So I'm going to send you to hell. 
Now, now, saints, this is in the New Testament, by the way. Some people say that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is not the New Testament. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the New Testament. Don't let no man be with you. What's wrong with people? You can look and say that is the, it says the New Testament. They'll still tell you it's not the New Testament. The New Testament is when when we see Ephesians and all that. What Bible? The, even the Bible says after Malachi, what after Malachi? New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They'll tell you, no, that's not the New Testament. The New Testament is where Jesus, where John the Baptist starts, Jesus starts. That's the New Testament. Remember what I'm telling you. Why did the word of God call him an unprofitable servant? Why did the word of God call him an unprofitable servant? You tell me. So God looks at people as whether you're profiting him or unprofitable to him. He can't spend you and he can't spend anything that you got on your possession. That's why the seed principle is so majestic because you are giving God literally the circulation of how the world circulates. You're telling him, I'm going to make sure that your work gets done, your conferences get done, your ministry. Now I wanna say this to uh, say to all of you all that been sowing, thank you so much. Thank you for helping me because today, I'm able to accomplish so much in the um, the venue and what I'm doing with the conference because you've been given money. See, last conference we did over um, hundreds of thousands of dollars. This conference I'm doing, every time I do it, See, I'm taking the money that you sow. I'm using it towards everything we do, our stage, everything, the band, everything. I follow exactly what the Holy Spirit wants in the realm of excellency. Lights, everything that we do, platform, everything, traveling, being able to music, instruments, everything. So it is you, see, you're profitable to me. There are people, they're not profitable to me. I can't spend them no way. They are not profitable to me. They're not adding on to me. Now I add on to them, but they don't add on to me because they don't sow nothing. They're not profitable to me. Those are the people that God bring into judgment because God will say, how are you eating from this restaurant and then you don't pay nothing? There's nowhere in the earth right now that you can go sit in a restaurant for the first time and walk out and don't pay nothing. There's no restaurant right now that you could walk out without being labeled a criminal. That's your first time there. Nowhere. But what man does, they don't put a value on the word of God like it should be sown into. And the word of God is the most powerful soul to sow into. Now, I want, I want you to hear this. If you're not profitable to God, and he can't spend you or what you have. You cannot be restored. David said he restored my soul in Psalm 23. What is the soul consisted of? The mind majorly. The major part of everybody's soul is their mind. Okay, so if your mind doesn't think about being a prophet to God, I'm talking about P-R-O-F-I-T. If your mind is not thinking about being a prophet to God, what is your purpose? That's the whole reason. The Bible says that he made you for his perfect pleasure. 
That's why he made you for his perfect pleasure. So if he can't, if he can't get no pleasure out of you, what's the purpose? There's no reason. You're not fulfilling nothing for God because he can't use you. You're not profiting him. There's people that say, Lord, I'm sorry for what I did. You sorry for what you did, but you still doing it because he can't profit from you. There's nothing he can pull from you. You're not adding to him in no way, shape or form. That's how the anointing increases on a person. I don't know why people, son, people try to be super deep, right? This is where preachers go wrong. They try to be super deep instead of just asking God for pure wisdom to just flow. They try to be super deep. They'll tell you, they'll kick something to you like this. They'll tell you, um, you can't increase in anointing. You only can increase in grace. Now, according to them, in their mind, when they thought, when they thought the thought, they thought, oh, this was deep, boy. But what is grace? Grace is the power of God. You are saved by what? Grace. Well, what are you really saved by? The power of God. Now, watch this. Let me break this down. Apostle Paul said that I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For it is what? The power of God unto what? Salvation, which is the grace of God unto salvation. But they'll tell you, oh, you don't, you know, we don't, uh, we don't increase in anointing. We increase in grace. <laughs> Confuse people. Then when you, when you teach on the anointing, increasing the anointing, oh, that's not possible. But then the same Bible said, all things are possible with God. <laughs> Think about it. That's why I say in all your getting of wisdom, get what? Understanding. In all your getting of wisdom, get understanding. The same way, let me show you this, son. They'll say, okay, nobody could be Jesus in the flesh. This is what they'll tell you. Nobody could be Jesus in the flesh. We just human. We not nothing. We just, uh, okay. So if we go to John chapter one, Verse 12, it says to as many as receive him, referring to Jesus, he gives them the power to become the sons of God. Now, what is he? The son of God. And what is he giving you the power to become? The sons of God. So where in your mind do you define that this power that's making you become the sons of God you're not being Jesus in the flesh so who are you being because who is the model of sonship it's not Makandiwa <laughs> it's not Chitawa <laughs> he's not giving you the power to become, become Sashua. He giving you the power to become the sons of God. The Bible also say now you are sons. That the spirit of the father is inside of you. No, no, the spirit of, uh, of the son is inside of you. You crying Abba Father now. So you have taken on the sonship. He gave you the power. So people try to be extra deep. But if you look at the anatomy of scripture, you will be able to see for yourself. This is in the word. Well, Matthew chapter 25 was talking about an unprofitable servant. What is an unprofitable, unprofitable servant? It's somebody, God can't use you for nothing. You're not sowing. 
You're not serving. He can't use you for nothing. You're unprofitable to him. Now, I, 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 want, I want you all to remember this and just, just hear me in the spirit. Because, see, um, that's why it's so important that when you get underneath a ministry, you let that um, mantle deliver you from demons because those demons will pop back even when the man of God teaching and start trying to interpret his doctrine. Let me show you something. This is why in the time frame, your man of God not doing a meeting, uh, he teaching online. It is a powerful moment in life where you make money, where you let the Lord use you in your city so that when he does do a conference, when he is building something, when he is creating something, you could be right there and say, hey, I'm going to sow this $25. Hey, I'm going to sow this $10. Hey, I'm going to sow this $100. I'm going to sow this $50. I'm going to sow this $500. You could give and help him complete the work. That's why it's so important that you become profitable to God in your city. He can use you. He can use you in your city. That's why it's so important that you take the time frame in which you're in, your place where you live, your residence, and you could be sowing into him. Now watch this here. Say he about to go do a meeting. You can't give zero. You know that you're not in the will of God. You can't profit God in no way, shape, or form. That's what Solomon, some of you are missing this right here. Solomon was helping God to build the gold house, the temple for his presence. Solomon was helping God. God was building on to, he had a vision. I want to build a gold temple. Solomon helped God do it. Solomon helped God do it. If Solomon didn't work, if he didn't have no money, by the time God about to build onto that uh, gold place, you know what he would have told him, son? He would have said, Lord, I'm going to pray that God, that, that, that you will send somebody to build on your temple. He was able to tell the Lord, no, I'm going to do it. I got it. I got it. Because I've been spending my time correctly. I ain't been playing with the devil. I've been letting you use my body for this moment. Now I could help you to get it done. That's why you, you look at what Satan does um, in the life of the, the believer. Satan wants you hooked on sin. I know I'm off. I, I don't need you to see me right now. I know I'm off. I, I got this blocked down on purpose. I want you to listen to what I'm saying. Satan don't want the believer to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might because you'll find out while I'm not thinking about sins and bad habits, I'm locating my money. I'm locating my provision in a month because my brain is not being stolen by unclean spirits. When your brain gets stolen by unclean spirits, your brain don't even got time to think about where it is that I'm supposed to make money, what I'm supposed to be doing that's producing, your brain is being stolen by unclean spirits. When you're a profitable servant, God can profit off of your services. How you choose to serve him with a seed, with time, with attentiveness, with genius, he's able to pour from you. And if you truly repent, you have to ask yourself this one question. Have I become profitable to God? And if you can't look at how you're profitable to God, how is he able to spend me? Can he spend me to always give him praise? Can he spend me to always give him thanks? Could he spend me in a ministry to help the man of God finish his assignment? Is the man of God that's assigned to me, is he able to pull from me and be happy? Or is he wrestling with me? 
So how am I profitable to God? I'm not even profitable to where God placed me. Where God placed me, my man of God can't look at me and get joy and happiness and peace from my life. My man of God has to pray that I get out of sin. My man of God has to labor for me to have power over spirits that he done gave me the deposit of power to have. <laughs> These foreigns, they be driving the wrong way. <laughs> so, can the man of God get joy from you? Problem solving from you. Are you profitable to God? And that's how you know if you fully repented. People say that they repent. Their man of God can't pull anything from them. He can't get no joy from their life, no pleasure from their life, no loyalty from their life. And see, saints, I'm talking to you now, but there's going to come a day on the day of judgment. And this is all oh, oh. There's going to come a day on the day of judgment and God's going to have everybody answer to what did they produce where he placed them. I pitch you here. The Bible says in Hebrews 13, 17, that your man of God going to give an account for you. And he is going to give a summary of what he experienced from you. If you were a problem to him, that's what his account going to be. If he couldn't rely on you, if he had issues with you connecting with his enemies, if you had issues with his decisions, that man of God going to be able to tell the Lord, Lord, this person that you gave me here, they didn't like what I was doing. They judged me. They criticized me. They said that this wasn't of you. They said they had to pray about it. Every time you gave you gave me an instruction to give them, they talking about, oh, I'm going to go ask the Lord if it's okay. Lord, with their broke self. That's why the poverty been in their bloodline all these years, because they don't obey instructions. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuse instruction, and they are refusers of instruction. By the way, I don't have that happening to me, but I hope that never happened to me. Because <laughs> I would buy a shirt that say donkey on it. I hope that never happened to me where I give somebody an instruction. My people been built up too much, but I hope that never happened to me where I give you an instruction and you say, let me ask God about it. I hope that never happened. I hope. I'm praying that it don't happen to me. Could that be a sad day? But son, let me ask you a question. Why would the Holy Spirit place in the word that your man of God going to give an account for your soul? Why are you not giving an account for your own soul? So people say that they're so humble. They say that they're so loving. They say that they're so honorable. But it's not even up to you. It's about the person that is experiencing you. You will always try to say good stuff about yourself. But it's the person that is experiencing you that could give the appropriate summary. <laughs>